Good evening gamers, welcome to Banished Souls, this is your Captain Cryptic. So, I wanted to make a video that's going to encompass some things. I've released a few about the helm today, so I hope that that has helped you uh, to better understand the helm. Understand, I'm not going to come in and dump all the information on you at once. I want you to get a, a grasp of what's going on, because there's really not a tutorial for it. Uh, and most of the videos that are out there, they're going to tell you all you need is these territories here. But they're not going to tell you how to build up to a point where you can even afford to move into Africa or the East Indies let alone build up those bases, let alone do all your uh, your uh, research upgrades inside the helm. So definitely look for those videos, guys. This video, we had a question. I wanted to take a moment to to talk a little bit about ships. So it was it was asked of me, said, uh, why do I use the Zama 3s in a fire bombard on the back on this ship when there's flooding weapons and piercing weapons that do a better job? That's a great question. You know, I, I don't see a problem with that question. So... Let us see why. So this is the sandbuck. So the reason I use any kind of burning weapon with this is because it is DPS styled, but it deals 5,000 burning damage when you apply a blaze effect. So if you're wondering what the blaze effect is, that is the ship catches fire and it sends a ring of fire out. Okay, it's going to send it 150 meters, and that's going to increase the ship's damage that it hits by 50 percent so it's not uncommon for it to completely annihilate an entire fleet it's not uncommon for that to happen so that is why i use blaze weapons on the jenny the sandbuck so a lot of my ships are being named jenny here i'm a forrest gump fan love most of the movies tom hanks has out uh i haven't seen a lot of newer ones but anyway that's why we use that it's going to give you all these different types of base stats using that now the question was for the snow, let's find her. So for the snow, what is a good weapon to use? So, well, when it comes to snow, this is mostly a tank. It's going to increase brace strength by 50%, brace strength recovery by 150%. It's going to recover brace strength by 4% per second while bracing as well. So what I suggest using with that on armor is something that is really heavily focused on brace with heels because you're building a tank. That's why I say Orbital Rose armor. I know people are saying Black Prince armor. Uh, you know, that's up to you to decide. I'm telling you what I've experienced, the, the Orbital Rose backed with that uh, water tank that you get over in the black market that's going to give you your stuff now as far as what type of weapons you should use that's going to be up to you as you can see it doesn't really affect the dps on anything all right so the question was should they use the basilisks so to figure that out i myself i run i run the sandbuck that is my number one go-to ship while i have built healing ships and tanks and and all of that as well my play style is dps that's why we're a raider fleet we will come in and as soon as pvp is opened up and they start having fleet battles and stuff we will be involved in every single battle because the guys i roll with in, in the crew uh we are very aggressive players we don't mess around we love that kind of stuff so open in the black market i want to look at i always look at the blueprint i don't look at just the weapons those are lower levels and uh, if you're going to spend money in the black market, save up, get what needs to be gotten. So Basilisk 3 and the Zama Zama is right next to each other. So the Zama, that's going to do, it's going to give you 105 weapons bonus here. That's what's going to add to your ship. So you can bump you up to that 12 or whatever, like if you're using 120s or whatever. So the cannonball damage is going to have, uh, this is a short range large four cannon that fires with thunderous power, adept at rendering ships vulnerable to crew attacks. And I get a lot of crew attacks on it. And it's great. And crew attacks, if you use the sandbuck, I do not back it with a water tank. I actually use scrapper station. And the reason I love this cannon is because it's going to give you a lot of crew attacks to use. But we're talking about the snow. So you could use that. But if you're using a basilisk, and this actually looks like a pretty good weapon from what I could see, except for the fact it doesn't have fire damage. But I think it will have a place on my snow. So this is a heavy bronze culvert, adeptly named the deadly myth uh, named after de deadly mythical serpent so designed to render ships vulnerable to crew attacks this is going to have some actual base stats here so a 1230 versus a 1549 it's got, oh, the basilisk is, is actually weaker well understand if you're coming against other tanks one of the things you want to deal with is piercing you want to pierce those holes so you're going to have a, a really good piercing damage 
to this. So you have rater increased charge rate of vulnerable effect by 50%. Understand what that means is you are going to get a 50% quicker chance to do, do, do another crew attack, do another crew attack, do another crew attack, and then eventually board once you clear the deck. Understand your, your crew attacks when they're pulling out the muzzle loaders or the, the muskets and they're pulling out the fire bombs and stuff like that. That is clearing the deck so you can actually board that ship before you board it so you don't lose people. Makes sense. So that's going to increase where you're going to be able to board more ships. So that's good. So it's going to add this 20% of damage, piercing damage. And it's going to increase the damage that you do to weak points by 75%. So this is a tank killer. This is going to be great to use. It's going to penetrate those heavy holes. So yeah, if you're using a, if you're using a snow tank and you want something that's going to be able to bust another tank, this is going to be a good one to use here. Uh, now we do have guys that are using the Twin Witch Ballista. Let's see if we can find that on here. I think that's actually just a weapon they sell. I don't think they actually have the uh, print for it. So we'd picked it up here a while back. Yeah, Twin Witch Ballista. So we'd pick one of these up. And they're okay. I, I'm not a real big fan of long range cannons. I like to get up in your face. Uh, but this thing, it's got a, it's got a pretty good uh, spread on it. We have a guy that runs that in our, he's one of our rogue leaders. He's one of the Commodores in the rogue fleet, and he does massive damage. Fantastic shot. My guess is he's played sniper in every game he's ever been in because he's just pinpoint, bam, right in the right spot. Quick reloads, good damage. Double draw it says it can be charged twice as long for increased damage and range. Means the, low, the longer you hold that, it's going to send that that shock wave out. It's going to be a maximum charge that increases 600%. Think about that, 600%. I seen this thing go up against the Zamharabu and one shot to the back of the head with this thing dropped its health by almost a quarter. Now, if you fought that thing by yourself, it's rare to get a shot that's gonna drop it down by a quarter. It's also gonna add that 20% piercing damage. It's going to increase the damage to weak points by 75%. This is sounding like it could be a very good option to put on a snow with those those uh, Basilisk 3's, uh, you're going to uh, increase piercing by 860, which is going to be great. You're going to get a base damage summary of 4,302. That's not if you're hitting weak points. That's just slamming it. You hit weak points, I've seen damage numbers come up in the hundred of thousand. Okay, it was like 140,000 is what he ended up doing to a ship. It was amazing. So weak point damage, 225%. Going to do a charge time of two seconds. Projectile speed is 1150 meters a second. So it's it's not going to take a while to get out there. Like when we lob the mortars or them bombards, it's it's pretty quick. Ship size, you can put that on medium or larger. Did you pay attention what it says there? Medium or larger. There is no class of larger as of yet. So that tells you they are bringing large holes to this game. Anyone who tells you otherwise needs to look at what they're telling. We, we are looking at new ships. We're looking at better furniture that is not going to be rated at level ones. They're going to start bringing in the advanced furniture. Now, I don't mean, know if that means blueprints that we can build or if it means stuff we got to open up in the past or it's going to be stuff that we have to earn and grind out. We don't know yet. They've not released that information to us. So uh, if you're looking for a snow build, I'm thinking Twin Winch Ballista. I'm definitely thinking that you want to put on some uh, these these uh, Basilith 3s. And... In the back, man, uh, I was asked if a Mons 3 could be a good option. I, now, I build Mons 3s. We'll bring up the blueprints instead of having to go back over to the... Uh, oh, where you at, buddy? The repair bombard. There we go. So the Mons 3, it does really good damage. It's 105 ready on the, uh, the board. 3,690 damage. Uh, it, it does not have that explosive effect. That you're going to get from like a, a fire bombard you're not going to run into a situation where you're going to get that major blaze effect it says it will add 10 percent of damage as explosive damage in a 30 meter blast radius okay so it's hard to get that i'm not i'm not gonna lie i've used this ship and i i use this weapon i mostly use it for those those forts the reason I use it for forts is because it increases the damage structure by 50%. Then you can pair it up with the furniture that does an additional 15%. So you're getting an additional 65% added to that, which is actually pretty nice. Plus, you're going to get, sorry about that, where you're going to get some of this uh, piercing damage in there too. 
I think it does good. It says it has 307 explosive. I've not noticed, but I don't think it's the type of explosive damage that's damaging ships heavy. It does a lot of piercing on ships, but you will get the explosion on top of those walls at, at times, and it will help give a little bit more of a pop on that wall. So, would you run it on the back? You know, if you're going to be in a situation where you're where you're going to be hitting forts, then yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have it on her. But if you're focusing mostly on ships, I would I would maybe opt in to put in some flooding weapons or something like that, just to kind of mix up some of the damage. That's that's going to be up to you. So we of course have Black Prince. Went ahead and picked this 450. Everyone kept talking about how great it was on the snow. So I was like, well, I don't want to miss out. So I went ahead and got it. And it was after we opened up the Ouroboros. But I wanted to give it a try because, you know, I kept seeing these things about this is what you need, this is what you need, this is what you need. And I tried it and it's got pretty good stats. But the Resolute says reduces damage taken by 50% when whole health is less than 33 it's going to reduce the damage. It's not it's not healing you. It's not charging you up like the Ouroboros do. I don't know if you've ever been at 33% or less damage. All it takes is one shot and you're done. So, to me, it, if if you are in a tank and you're allowing your, your armor and your health to get to 33% because you're not effectively bracing and using a healing effect, then you're not a very effective tank. So... That's my take on that, guys. So I do recommend using the Ouroboros armor. Uh, now, there was a question about... I think it was this one. Or maybe that one. No, it's this one. Because it's a 1250, it gives a 6% explosive, a 40% flooding, and a 15% piercing. So for those tanks, this could be something to think about. Um, I just... I've not ran across PvP where people are using flooding weapons yet. So, unless something happens, I don't I don't see a need for this armor as of yet. But in PvP world, you're going to need ships that are equipped with different types of stuff. So if one part one wing of your fleet is taking some damage, move the other one up while those guy come and retrofit with something else. That could work. So you got to think about this game from the PvP aspect. Everyone has gotten used to. Just running PVE, and it's kind of it's 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 fun for guys like us who are preparing, and we've been expecting the PVP since day one on this of uh, the open betas. But for a lot of the guys that are kind of getting used to just the co-op situation, maybe run a few things, they're going to be in a world of hurt when this PVP stuff opens up, guys. It's going it's going to be great for us because I expect we are going to slaughter through some fleets. And typically, depending on how that works with plundering those fleet dens that they're supposed to be able to have, we're going to develop some farms, I believe. Uh, any any PvP game I've ever been in, we will find a group that really thinks that they're all that, and we will destroy them down to nothing and then farm them down to where, you know, there's nothing left of the group until it stops producing, and then we'll move on to the next one. And that's the way that you play PvP uh, games with a MMORPG. You just continue to farm, continue to farm, continue to farm until they finally leave, you know, or, or, or they will finally, like, you know, move over to another area or the fleet will just become broken it's not even worth hitting anymore and some people say well that's not really a fair game but understand this is a pirate game that is focused on plundering and that is what they're going to deliver it's not supposed to be just run around on the islands and play assassin creed this is a pirate shooter that is based off naval combat so i hope that that has helped you I hope that that kind of gives you some ideas about what we're doing in the game, guys, how we're looking at stuff. So we're looking pretty good. Uh, we got some of our upgrades done, which was nice. This is my Sandbuck. I love this ship. Uh, now you can change it to look like whatever you want. I, I know we've done some videos on this in the past, but we are running the Zama 3s on this thing uh, all the way to the front. But on the back, we have added a Bombard 3, a Fire Bombard 3. It works great. If you get that ship in behind you, just boom, just kind of slam them in. It gives you a little bit more range. I thought about maybe switching something with just a little more range, but typically the only problem I've got with something coming up behind me is going to be a brig, at which point I just slam the brakes on and he comes right up. If you start shooting, just brace real quick and then shoot your cannons and make sure that your stamina, it rebuilds very quickly using the water tank or you can feed your crew and you're just going to sit there and bam, 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 bam if you're in the snow. But this here, I do not run the water tank. I run the scrapper station. And what I do with that, man, is I will slam it down and I will start turning 
so the wind can spin me around quicker. So when I hit them and it starts to do damage, I'm aiming for weak spots, anything in the red, come up, pop it real quick, and then start those, those crew attacks so we can continue to charge. And when you're doing a crew attack, if they begin to try and heal their ship in the middle of attack, guess what? You're negating their heal, and it actually continues to do even more damage, and it could set it ablaze because we are in the sandbuck and damage a lot of the other fleets around. Now, what I have noticed is the, the radius ring that expands in PvP, it does massive damage against other ships. It's not one of those deals, well, it's only doing that because this is PvE. It does really good damage, at least in the cutthroat cargo events, just to really seriously smash it in there. And then, of course, the Leopold 3. I'm loving this. Uh, now, that's mainly, I run this mainly because of the, the Plague Fleets, guys. Uh, the one I truly actually really enjoy is the LaFleur. If you're in a sandbuck, you're going to run into a situation where those brigs, they're like outrunning you. This is going to slow them down because if you can get this close enough to where they will get hit by that gas, it will negate all of their stamina and make them stop dead in the water. And by the time they get going again, you've gotten a little bit closer. And every 20 seconds, you pop them again and you pop them again. And you get just a little bit closer each time. And then you wear them out with them Zama 3s. And they usually, about four or five shots, they are done. That's how long it takes me to take out most snow ships that I run across. So I hear about these these big built-up snows that people are using. And it doesn't work. Uh, so I went in and I used my snow against a guy that has a, a sandbuck that's pretty similar to mine. And uh, he come up and tried to hit my snow with the way I've got it built. And I was able to brace through everything. And it was it was a fantastic little test. It worked pretty good. We've put some videos up. Make sure you look for that stuff. We've got PvP. we got PvE. we got world events. We've got all kinds of videos in there. So make sure that you check that out because it's a lot of work to put those videos up for you. And I want to make sure everybody is getting the most out of the game because this is a wonderful game. Do not listen to these other gamer magazine, whatever, the, the reports, you know, about how Sea of Thieves is really taking the wind out of the skull and bones and all this other stuff. Let me tell you, I used to play Sea of Thieves from day one. I did not like the game. Why didn't I like the game? Because it was not a true naval combat. It was running around with this real sluggish, cartoonish looking character that when you actually fight with a sword, it moves real slow. Real slow. It takes forever to reload. It takes forever to reload. It, 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 was, it was horrible. It really was. So I didn't care for Sea of Thieves. Uh, I'm loving the heck out of Skull and Bones, though. If you were more into the action pack stuff, maybe you like that black fat, that black flag. Uh, type of battle and you go man this would just be perfect with some friends so we can actually come in and just farm and that's, that's what this game is right now uh, you are looking at a PvE situation where everything looks to be pretty good <coughs> co-op is great but most of us have bought this for the PvP and we are getting stoked that they are starting to move the game in that direction so Y'all have a wonderful evening. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. If you want to be a part of our crew, guys, we are currently open recruiting. We are looking for members, and we are looking for uh, crew leaders and stuff as this game expands and as our group gets larger. We would like to encompass more than one server if we possibly can, and we will use our Discord as a base of operations to communicate with those admirals that will be coming into a growing community. Y'all have a wonderful evening.